Hello, this is Gino Wizzy with the National Weather Service in Chicago. Uh, one of the questions that's come up with uh, the extraordinary amount of ice on Lake Michigan this winter is how is that going to impact our spring weather and even going into summer? First of all, if you haven't heard by now, uh, Lake Michigan's about 92% ice coverage and it's nearing record levels of ice coverage since that data has been kept and it's rivaling the ice coverage that we saw during the brutal winters of the late 70s. So, the latest on the ice coverage, what kind of implications does this uh, record level or near record level ice coverage have on our spring and early summer weather near Lake Michigan? Will we get more frequent lake breezes, colder afternoon temperatures near the lake, colder lake surface temperatures? What's it all going to mean? So, to do this, we took a look back at historical frequency or, excuse me, historical peak winter ice coverage versus the frequency of onshore winds. And the blue line is the uh, percentage of times at 4 o'clock in the afternoon winds were onshore at Miggs Field, the lakefront airport that used to be, uh, versus the peak amount of winter ice coverage on Lake Michigan. And really you'll notice that there is little or no correlation between these lines. Theoretically, if there was a strong correlation between these two variables, you would expect there to be a higher frequency of lake breezes during years where there is a high frequency or a high uh, uh, peak winter coverage of ice. And you'll notice there really is that, not that correlation at all. That's for April. This is the same variable looked at for May. And again, you're really not seeing much of a correlation. Uh, 1994, a year when we had a very uh, large amount of ice on the lake, there was a high frequency of lake breezes that year. But if you look at the late 70s, when there was even higher coverage or concentration of ice on the lake, those years actually had below average frequency of uh, onshore winds or lake breezes. So really we're not seeing any sort of uh, appreciable signal in the lake breeze frequency. And the same thing shows up in June. Where there's really just no correlation between lake breeze frequency in the afternoon versus the peak ice coverage during the winter time. So another variable we took a look at is comparing the 4 o'clock afternoon temperature at Miggs Field averaged over the one month period for each year uh, for each one of the three months of spring and into early summer versus the peak uh, ice coverage for the winter time. And yet again, you really see just no correlation. As a matter of fact, you don't see a significant amount of year-to-year -year variability in the average lakefront and the average temperature for the month along the lakefront. There's a few years that are a little bit warmer than average, including uh, 1977 May, but that was also a year that had uh, very high ice coverage. So it's pretty safe to say that the ice coverage doesn't seem to play a significant role in the average afternoon 4 o'clock temperature along the lake lakefront. Now, comparing the water temperatures versus the peak amount of ice coverage during the winter, uh, during May, May, excuse me, April and May, there really is no appreciable signal, and the water temperatures typically don't vary much from year to year during those months. It's pretty solidly in the 30s in April, and generally in the 30s moving into the 40s into April. So we really don't see significant temperature variations in uh, April and May of the water temperature. However, in June, there's a much greater variability, and this is probably one of the stronger correlations that we were able to pick up in looking at this data, is that the years that had high coverage of ice during the winter time tended to have uh, somewhat cooler lake water temperatures during the month of June. And so essentially what you'd be looking for is when you see peaks in the black line upward, you should be seeing uh, corresponding downward peaks in the red line, which is the, indication, which is the uh, trace for water temperatures in June. And there's a pretty decent correlation between those two variables. Now, taking a look at how each one of these variables uh, plays out and compares with each other during the given month, you'll notice April, and this is the period of record that we've got water temperature data, as well as uh, surface observations out of Miggs Field, is 1982 to 1996. So it's a little bit of a shorter period of record than what we were looking at with some of the other graphs. But you can see, uh, really, in April, there is no strong signal yet again. Uh, certainly the April of 1994, the average afternoon lakefront temperature was fairly warm compared to other years, and that was a year that saw a significant amount of ice coverage on Lake Michigan. Uh, at the same time, you'll notice that it corresponds pretty well with the frequency of onshore uh, winds at 4 o'clock, so the purple line. So on years when you have a lower purple line, which is the uh, percentage of onshore winds, tend to correspond pretty well with the years that have warmer uh, lakefront temperatures, which makes sense. Now, the frequency of the onshore winds really doesn't correspond very well at all to the uh, peak ice coverage on Lake Michigan. Now, looking to June, uh, same variables. Really, it's uh, <laughs> trying to find a signal in this mess that just looks like a big bowl of spaghetti is, is pretty difficult. Uh, there really is no strong correlation between 
the variables that would be of any use in predicting what kind of weather conditions we could expect along the lakefront this June. There's years that we had uh, fairly high ice coverage that were a little bit warmer and a little bit cooler than average. But generally speaking, it looks like temperatures along the lakefront, uh, monthly 4 o'clock average temperatures, are pretty much in the mid-60s to mid-70s almost every year. Uh, so really no appreciable signal in June either. So there is some weak correlation to the average monthly Lake Michigan water temperature to the peak ice coverage, mainly as you get into May and especially into June. But the lakefront temps uh, correlate best with the lake breeze frequency, and the lake breeze frequency doesn't seem to correlate at all with the uh, peak winter ice coverage. So it seemed like the safe conclusion to draw is that the near record ice coverage on Lake Michigan this year doesn't really uh, mean that we're going to see more frequent and or colder or stronger lake breezes this spring and early summer. It really seems to be that the large-scale patterns seem to dictate the frequency of lake breezes, which in turn dictates the extent of cooling along the lakeside. So really, uh, just because there's a ton of ice on the lake this year doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have a cold uh, spring or early summer along the lakefront, and it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have more lake breezes. That's really going to be controlled more on large-scale patterns, which tend to be more difficult to predict uh, this far out.